So, the upcoming Shadow Society event drops on March 26th, and it comes at the same time as the mid-season patch, meaning a lot of things will be changing in the game. Of course, we've seen the patch notes, a lot of legend changes are coming, and overall, there are plenty of changes that you might have missed that I'll be talking about in this video, along with some more things that are coming in the future of Season 20 that you might be looking forward to. Let's first take a look at some of the cosmetics that were mentioned in the blog post that you can see during the trailer. We have the legendary Bloodhound skin, which you can see here. They're all suited up in the similar style to the ballistic skin. You can see the Bloodhound tactical icon on the tie as well. And then we also have the Mad Maggie skin, which looks pretty cool as well. And in addition to these weapon skins, which are a part of the event, there were some more weapon skins that you could see in parts of the trailer. So we have a car SMG skin that's coming to match the theme. We're also going to be getting a legendary Nemesis skin, which you can see here. Also a legendary Vault skin and an R99 skin. It also looks like there's a Mastiff skin as well. And an Eva 8 skin that you can see in the background there. So plenty of weapon skins, lots of legend skins, all with that Shadow Society theme. Now they're the paid cosmetics and honestly this event is going to be super overpriced. It's going to be like the Final Fantasy event. It's going to cost you around $300 to buy everything. So honestly why even waste your money on these things? I could think of a million things you'd rather buy instead of completing this collection event. Here's one thing for example. 12 years worth of antivirus subscriptions to protect yourself from Destroyer 2009. Yeah I think that was well said. But luckily the Shadow Society event has more than just cosmetics and one part of the patch notes was in fact the lifeline changes. Now the lifeline changes completely change her perks so that instead she has a tactical which is always off cooldown and her care package changes so that instead of giving you a care package weapon her next care package will spawn in with a gold evo cache, a gold knockdown shield and a gold backpack. And John Larson a game designer at Apex actually shared why the devs decided to do this. They said even pre-release we figured lifelines care package upgrade was a candidate for a quick replacement. That one was actually created before we added god mode wingman to the rotation, guaranteed guns in care packages, and honed in on what an evo cache should be. We decided to roll with it anyway. While not really on brand for lifeline, she could use the help, and spawning a care package was an easy sell. All it took was spectating a few days of care package weapon inflation and in the early ranked grind to convince us to pull the trigger on a mid-season change. Personally, watching Aurora helped me understand the strength of the evo cache, especially in comp where reds are quite rare. We thought a guaranteed evo cache and gold knockdown shield could be an interesting trade-off that's more support oriented. So that's why they made that change and they want to actually turn Lifeline into more of a combat medic, which should accelerate her into her rework, which is actually supposed to be coming in season 22. Exciting stuff. But they also mentioned plenty of things that would have been overlooked in the patch notes. First of all, they mentioned a three strikes update. Now, most of you remember three strikes is the beloved LTM where each each team gets three lives, you drop in hot, and you have super fast revives. It's a really fast paced version of Apex, but the games do last a really long time as everyone has three lives. It's a ton of fun. You get super high damage games. Well, they've updated three strikes. It says revive time reduced to two seconds, but the original revive time was one second, so it's actually been increased to two seconds. Players revived will also have 100% health and 0% shields now, and a new minimum guaranteed loot system will ensure that you respawn with a competitive version of your loadout and inventory, so probably just the attachments you need and stuff like that. But the reason I'm telling you this is because the fact that they've mentioned that they're updating three strikes means, of course, it's coming back. People are always asking for three strikes to come back. In fact, many people are asking for three strikes to be a permanent mode, and people even said they want it to replace pubs. But the fact that they're actively updating it means that it will be making a return later in season 20, and who knows, maybe this is a step towards it becoming a permanent mode. Speaking of things becoming a permanent mode, the new lockdown LTM, which is basically Hardpoint from Call of Duty, is going to release as a new LTM during the Shadow Society event. It's not going to be a part of Mixtape just yet. Now this mode will have four squads competing against each other, fighting for these capture zones which will move around throughout the map. But of course this is a Mixtape style mode, so it makes sense that this will be joining Mixtape after the Shadow Society event has finished. So keep an eye out for that if you enjoy the LTM it should be making its way to mixtape. Now, speaking of mixtape, they also added a pretty nice change into control. Now, for any of you that enjoy playing mixtape, this might be a nice one for you. In control, players respawning on the mobile respawn beacon will now enter a skydive when they exit the dropship instead of free falling down. This makes the mobile respawn beacon even better when you're playing control because it will allow you to actually skydive to a position that you wanna be rather than being forced to free fall into a terrible spot. Now, they're also bringing a few pretty nice quality of life changes 
changes and the first one is that reactives will now appear at the top of lists and have a shimmer effect. Meaning, if you have reactive weapon skins, you'll now be able to actually identify which ones are the reactive skins. And I'm sure that will look pretty nice in your inventory. Another good thing for solo queuers, the default legend pick, which is whoever you were in the lobby, will now show as an actual selection to your teammate, unless you hover over another legend. The reason this is a good thing is because if someone's AFK during the selection screen, no one actually knows which legend they're going to pick. And sometimes it can be a panic when they pick the legend you want to play and you have a few seconds to quickly decide who you're going to play instead. They're also adding a lock legend upgrades option in the firing range, which I believe will remember the perk you picked for a legend. So if you swap legends and go back and forth, you'll keep the perk that you selected on that legend, which will just make using the firing range flow a little nicer when you're selecting the upgrades you want. Now, of course, you know we're getting the new artifact, Cobalt Katar Mythic Melee Weapon, but there's something very interesting about it. If you look, you can see inscribed on it, it says Memento Mori, which literally means, remember, you must die. It's basically a symbolic trope as a reminder of our mortality. So that's cool to know, but also, two years ago, a user named Maiden Monarch made a concept heirloom for Ash, and it was this really cool weapon, but they actually named it the Memento Mori. And this was a really good concept art. It was shared in a bunch of videos. I even showed how cool it was back in the day. So maybe the devs did take inspiration from this concept art. This isn't the first time we've seen things like this. In fact, the Cobalt Katar itself is quite similar to concept art that somebody made for a potential Revenant heirloom, which is also a Katar. Obviously, this person didn't invent the Katar weapon. It's a real life weapon. But with the whole school placement and everything, it's pretty cool that the devs may have drawn inspiration from community design. Now, I've also got to mention that it still does seem that normal legend heirlooms are being put on hold for a while. As of course, this is now the second season in a row where we haven't got a new legend heirloom because Newcastle's heirloom was scrapped. And this artifact dagger is confirmation that they're going to be moving to artifacts for the near future and working on more of those rather than giving us the new legend heirlooms that we've waited so long for. So Maggie Mains... I'm sorry. Now, the Shadow Society event will last three weeks, and it will follow the same system as the Final Fantasy event, meaning that Apex packs can be bought with Apex coins or crafted with crafting metals, but they get more expensive the more you buy. And if you remember, the Final Fantasy event did give us one free pack, and it also gave us one free pack in the reward shop. And that's going to be the same for the Shadow Society event. As you can see, we will be able to get one free pack in the second week of the reward shop. But also on March 26th, with the release of the Shadow Society event, we'll also release the new Mad Maggie challenges. This means that everyone will have Mad Maggie unlocked and you'll have to complete challenges for Mad Maggie to work towards that flatline recolor. That means there's going to be a lot of Mad Maggie players during this update and Mad Maggie is really strong in season 20 with her perks, so it's going to be pure chaos. This does also mean that the free Mad Maggie gifts will be making their way into the store as well, so make sure you don't forget those and ask your friends to gift you those things. I mean, the Maggie skin isn't amazing, but free skins are free skins and in the world of expensive of Apex Cosmetics, sometimes we got to take those. But looking a little bit further into the Shadow Society event on the 9th of April, Apex will be dropping the Loba Challengers. This also means they'll be dropping the Loba skin that you can gift to your friends for free. And this Loba skin actually looks cooler than any of the other free skins we've gotten so far in these Season 20 Challengers. As you can see, it has a really cool effect and the gloves look really awesome as well with a very nice glowing animation to them. Let me know what you think of this Loba skin, but that's definitely something to look forward to if you enjoy free skins and if you enjoy playing Loba. So there you go. Those are some things you may have missed in the upcoming Shadow Society event and a couple of decent rewards to actually look forward to later in the Shadow Society event. Let me know if you're excited for this event. Of course, it's going to be extremely expensive and I don't advise you spending any money on this, but there are plenty free things up for grab as well as some interesting changes in the patch notes for us to enjoy.